Hello everybody, I am Dr. D. Kavita, Assistant Professor, Department of Biochemistry, Biotechnology and Bioinformatics, Avanashlingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, Coimbatore. Now you have chosen to study the module on the technology for the production of alcoholic beverages. Fermentation is a crucial step for the production of any innovative products and especially in food and beverage industry. This fermentation helps to improve the products of unique flavor, health and nutrition, texture and safety as well, which is maintaining almost a hundred percent of its originality. Like any other industry, this fermentation industry or the alcoholic beverage industry is a very very old industry, still it is a biotechnology industry. And now this fermentation technology is uh, going to focus on a lot of improvements in the field of innovative products. And this extensive researches are in order to meet the challenges which are facing or which are have to face the consumer market rates and as well as the needs of the consumers. After completing this module, you will be able to understand the recent developments in the alcoholic beverage industry and to comprehend the various kinds of innovations in the microbial strains used for fermentation. Realize the importance of immobilized yeast technology. Let us see the definition of alcoholic beverage. Any beverage containing 0.55 of alcohol by volume to 76% alcohol by volume is considered to be an alcoholic beverage. Those with a higher than 76% alcohol are known as medicines such as anesthetics. Let us have a look at the history of beverage production. It encompasses with the production of so many different types of beverages ranging from small traditional local products produced in small villages to modern global mega breweries and distilleries which are able to churn out vast quantities of products standardized to specific quality parameters. Ethanol has been made since ancient times by the fermentation of sugars by yeast. This is being made in large scale today by implementing it in industrial. All beverage uh, ethanol and more than half of the industrial ethanol is still made by this process. Starch from potatoes, corn and other cereals can serve as raw material for this purpose. The yeast enzyme zymase changes the simple sugars into ethanol and carbon dioxide. The fermentation reaction is quite complicated as impure cultures of yeast in the process produce unwanted substances in varying amounts which includes glycerin and other organic acids. The fermented liquid usually contains 7 to 12 percent of ethanol which is then concentrated to 95 percent by a series of distillations. Starches and other carbohydrates from the cereals such as corn, malt, barley, oats, rye, wheat, rice, grain, sorghum are usually the sources but saccharin materials such as sugarcane, sugar beets, molasses and fruit juices can also be used. Further, other starch sources include potatoes and sweet potatoes. The alcoholic beverages can be classified as beers which include lager and ales, wines which are table wines, sparkling wine, fortified wine and aromatized wine. And the last one, the distilled liquids, which include whiskey, brandy, rum, gin and vodka. We shall see the general process of manufacture now. The process used in the manufacture of ethanol by fermentation depends on the nature of raw materials. Saccharin materials usually require little or no preliminary treatment other than dilution and may be fermented directly after certain customary adjustments have been made in the mash. But starchy and cellulosic materials have to be hydrolyzed to fermentable sugars before the yeast can utilize them. The quality of the product obtained through this process depends on the preliminary treatment imposed on the raw material. The various factors that determine the production of a high quality product are the optimum concentration of sugar used, the optimum pH, optimum temperature, the addition of nutrient substances to the mash, inhibition of bacterial growth, use of vigorous strain of yeast for high alcoholic tolerance and also capable of producing high amount of alcohol at the same time. Maintenance of proper anaerobic conditions, 
prompt distillation of the fermented mash and this entire process is shown in the diagram. Now first let us discuss how ethanol is made from molasses. The molasses mash is first adjusted to a desired sugar concentration and temperature by the addition of water and the pH is also adjusted by addition of acid. Yeast, the starter, is mixed with the mash in the fermentation tank which is usually covered. Streams of the adjusted mash and the starter flowing simultaneously in the fermenter may be caused to converge on a baffle board on the upper part of the tank. The mash and the starter become well mixed as they sparta and fall to the bottom of the tank. An alternative method is to add the starter after the mash has been placed in the tank and mixing the two effectively by passing compressed air from the bottom of the tank. The fermentation becomes vigorous with production of large amounts of carbon dioxide. The entire process takes an approximate time of 50 hours and the fermented molasses is termed as beer which is distilled continuously to separate the alcohol from the volatile constraints from the mash and this is further purified in rectifying columns and then stored in a warehouses. The detail process is as follows. The first step depends on the types of yeast used and strains of Saccharomyces cerevisiae are commonly used but other yeasts such as Saccharomyces anavensis and Saccharomyces pombe may also be employed. And second step is the preparation of starter. A starter of large volume is required to pitch the main mash which is of about several thousand gallons in quantity. Using aseptic technique, a tube containing about 10 cc of sterile wort is inoculated from a pure culture of the yeast which may be maintained on malt agar media. After incubation for a period of time at a temperature ranging between 25 to 30 degrees centigrade, the yeast grown or used to inoculate flasks containing approximately 200 cc for sterile mash. This is followed by an incubation period after which the culture is sealed into a sterile mash of about 4 liter capacity. The subsequent inoculation is done in a semi plant scale size which is 10 to 40 gallons. This fermented mash, the starter is pumped into the main mash which constitutes pitching. And the third step, the concentration of the sugar, a sugar concentration of about 10 to 18 percent is usually satisfactory, although other varying concentrations are used. The concentration of the sugar is the vote, which is usually determined by a baling hydrometer. And the fourth one important is the nutrient substances. Though molasses generally contains most of the nutrients required for fermentation, Ammonium mash is added to supply and meet the nitrogen or phosphorus demands. And the first important one is the pH of the mash. Fermentation proceeds smoothly when the mash is adjusted to a pH of about 4 to 4.5. Sulfuric acid is generally used for this purpose. And the use of lactic acid also gives satisfactory results. And sixth, the oxygen tension. Large amounts of oxygen is essential in the early stages for the optimum reproduction of the yeast cells. The temperature which is very important where the mash is usually pitched at a temperature of 60 to 80 degrees centigrade. And this distillation is important again step which is where the fermented mash has to be distilled to separate the ethyl alcohol from the other constituents of the mash. The entire quantity of beer is not distilled immediately after the fermentation and so they are pumped into a storage tank called beer wells where it is held until it is distilled. During distillation, fractions containing different concentrations of alcohol, that's wines and slopes are separated. The fractions containing wines are concentrated to 95% ethanol by further distillation or fractionation. Next, we are going to see how this ethanol is made from whey. The process consists of heating the whey to boiling, adjusting the pH to 5, separating out the protein by filtration, cooling the clear whey to 34 degrees centigrade 
and carrying out the fermentation at 33 degree centigrade to 34 degree centigrade for 48 to 72 hours. This is followed by a final separation and distillation of the alcohol. The quantity of the yeast required for the seeding process is usually 2% of the weight of the lactose present in the whey before fermentation. Byproducts from this fermentation are the whey proteins and slopes of which the later may be dried after the alcohol has been distilled. The next important source is corn. Beer and ale are the most principal and widely produced malt beverages that are produced. These are made of malt, hops, yeast, water and malt agents. The malt is prepared from barley grains which have been germinated and dried. Hops are the dried flowers of the hop plant. The malt adjuncts are starch or sugar containing materials added in addition to the carbohydrate in the malt. Starch adjuncts include corn and corn products, rice, wheat, barley, sorghum, grain, soybean, cassava, potatoes, etc. A brief overview of the manufacturing process is described as follows. The first step is the malting. Barley grains are soaked or steeped at 10 to 15.6 degrees centigrade, germinated at 16 to 21 degrees centigrade for 5 to 7 days and kiln dried. The malt which is a source of amylases and proteinases remain after the sprouts and germs are removed. Second step is the mashing. The purpose of mashing process is to make soluble as much as possible of the valuable portions of the malt and malt adjuncts and especially to cause hydrolysis of starches and other polysaccharides and of proteins and as well as the products of their hydrolysis. The main malt mash is prepared by mixing malt with water at 38 to 50 degrees centigrade to which cooked starchy malt adjuncts are added that's have approximately 100 degrees centigrade and this brings the temperature needed for saccharification to occur which is in range of 65 to 70 degrees centigrade. After the insoluble materials settle to the bottom the clear wort liquid is obtained and the next is the boiling the wort with hops. The liquid containing wort and hops is boiled for about 2.5 hours after which it is filtered through the hop residues. This has a number of purposes which are concentrating the mixer, sterilizing it, inactivating the enzymes to extract the soluble substances to coagulate and precipitate the proteins and to contribute antiseptic substances such as alpha resins to the wort and beer. These antiseptic substances are effective against gram positive bacteria. Vacuum packed milk, hops and concentrated hop extracts are used as replacements nowadays. Fermentation where a special beer yeast, a strain of Saccharomyces car carisbergensis is used for inoculation or pitching of the cooled wort. A heavy inoculum of about 1 lb per 31.5 gal of beer is used. Different uh, breweries employ different temperatures which range from 3.3 to 14 degree centigrade. Alcohol and carbon dioxide are formed during this process along with glycerol and acetic acid. As the fermentation concludes, the carbon dioxide formed decreases and the yeast flocculate and settle down. And the fifth step is the aging or maturing where the young green beer is stored or lagered in vats for several months during which the precipitation of proteins, yeast, resin and undesirable substances occur and the beer becomes mellowed or matured. The last step is the finishing. The beer produced is cooled, clarified, filtered and packed in bottles, cans or barrels. There are other malt beverages and beer types. Variations in malt beverages are dominated by several factors such as alcohol content, concentrations of the malt and hops used, length of aging, initial total solids used and as well which are present during and after fermentation 
and the temperature of the fermentation. Malt liquor may have a higher alcohol content when compared to that of a regular beer. Bock beer is a very dark beer with a higher alcohol content. Brewing involves the addition of higher concentration of malt and hops followed by longer aging. Pilsner is a large type beer which is light in color containing little remaining fermentable carbohydrates. Low calorie, light or no carbohydrate beers are made from pre-hydrolyzed wort. Fungal enzymes such as glucomylases and amylases are used to hydrolyze the dextrin to maltose and glucose which can be completely fermented to alcohol which gives an end product with a lower concentration of remaining carbohydrate. Ale is made with a top yeast, a strain of Saccharomyces cerevisiae instead of the bottom yeast employed for beer. The fermentation temperature is a little higher of 24 degrees centigrade and so the fermentation is more rapid taking for about 5 to 7 days. As the yeast clumps and reaches the tops it is skimmed off. Ale, produ ale production uses more amount of hops than in beer and some ales higher alcohol content with that taste. Waste beer, a porter and stout or ales which where the top is are employed and waste beer is a light dark ale made chiefly from waste. Porter and stout are dark and heavy and sweet ales. Sake is a yellow rice beer or the wine of Japanese origin with an alcohol content of about 14 to 17 percent. Starters called as koji are made by growing aspergillus rice on a soaked and steamed rice mash until maximum yield of enzymes are obtained. This koji contains amylases which causes hydrolysis of rice starch to sugars. The liquor obtained from the fermented mash after 10 to 14 days is called the sake. Sonti is a rice beer or wine of India where the mold rice of sonti and yeast are used for fermentation. Pulk is a Latin American beer beverage containing about 6% of alcohol that results from a natural yeast fermentation of the juice of agave or century plant. Now we shall look into the wine production. Wine is a product made by normal alcoholic fermentation of grapes or grape juice by yeast and subsequent aging process. Wine is classified into three major categories. Table wines which are also termed as still wines and are consumed as complement to food. Sparkling wines such as Champagne have a lot of effervescence which are used for festive occasions. Fortified wines such as sherry and vermouth are consumed before and after meals and are used widely in cooking also. Fortified wines have a higher alcoholic and sugar content and their fermentation is arrested by the addition of more potent liquor usually grape during the winemaking process and this makes the alcoholic content to rise to 15 to 20 percent compared to the 9 to 14 percent present in the table wines. The manufacturing process of red wine is a very good example to know about the wine making process and the process involved are discussed as follows. The first step is the preparation of juice that is the grapes having a desirable amount of sugar content are chosen and the concentration of sugar is mostly from 15 to 20 percent which is based on the ripeness. This is treated with sulfur dioxide or potassium metabisulfite in equal amounts to inhibit the growth of undesirable competitors of the wine yeast. And second step is the fermentation. A natural inoculum or yeast strain Saccharomyces cerevisiae or ellipsoidans is used. The juice along with the skins and the inoculum are mixed continuously to encourage growth of and as well as aid in extracting the color from the skins. Later on mixing is stopped to facilitate fermentation under anaerobic conditions maintaining the temperature at 24 to 27 degrees centigrade for 3 to 5 days and this is followed by a secondary fermentation in storage tanks 
for 7 to 11 days at 21 to 29 degrees centigrade. Clear wine is drawn off or wrapped from the bottom of the tank from the sediment. And third is the storing and aging. This uh, wine may be the flash pasteurized before aging to precipitate proteins. It is cooled, held for a few days, filtered and transferred into wooden tanks or concrete tanks for aging. This may be done for years to bring about changes in body and flavor of the wine, giving it the characteristic aroma. During aging, some fermentation of malic acid in the grape juice occurs by lactobacilli or micrococci which occur resulting in the production of lactic acid and carbon monoxide which may result in acidity. The final alcohol content varies from between 6 to 9 percent by weight. And the fourth one is the volatile acidity. A high content of volatile acidity in wines is indicative of a faulty fermentation. This occurs due to the presence of aerobic acetic acid bacteria in air such as acetobacter aceti or gluconobacter oxidants which bring about acidification. The legal limit of volatile acid content is around 0.14 gram per 100 ml expressed in terms of acetic acid for red wine and 0.12 gram for white wine. Next, we shall discuss about the third type of alcoholic beverages that's distilled liquors. Distilled liquors or spritz are produced by distillation of an alcoholic fermented product. Rum is obtained from alcoholically fermented sugarcane juice or molasses. Whiskies are distilled from saccharified and fermented grain mashes. Example, rye whiskey from rye mash, corn whiskies from corn mash, etc. Special distillers yeast are employed like Saccharomyces ellipsoidans to get high yield of alcohol. Brandy comes from the distillate of grape wine. These distilled liquids do not face any problem of spoilage by microorganisms. Let us see how the improvements are made in the wine yeast technology. A specialized yeast was genetically engineered and received approval even from both the United States FDA and, and as well as Canada for use in wine production. This yeast was developed to avoid the problem that can rise when using bacteria for the malolactic fermentation process, which includes the production of undesirable biogenic amines and precursors to carcinogens produced by the bacteria. Recent studies have showed that there is a biochemical communication system that crosses from bacteria to yeast which makes use of prions. This system is responsible for a chronic winemaking problem that is the stuck fermentation and they found that the glucose repression circuit could be interrupted when bacteria jump start the replication of the priors in the membranes of yeast cells. This interference of the priors causes the yeast to process carbon sources other than glucose. As such, the yeast becomes less effective in glucose metabolism resulting in a fermentation that slows down and eventually stops, that's the stuck fermentation. Another danger in the production of some types of beverage ethanol is the presence of ethyl carbamate in the final product. Ethyl carbamate is a carcinogen which is formed from a reaction between ethanol with urea. By using recombinant DNA technology, wine yeasts have been created that can reduce the formation of ethyl carbamate in the final beverage. Recombinant yeast has an extra copy of a Saccharomyces yeast gene inserted that reduces the formation of ethyl carbamate by degrading the urea precursor. Since this yeast does not contain DNA from any other organism, it has been approved for commercial use. What are the perceptions on using a genetically modified yeast? Over 25 years ago, when the methods to modify industrial yeast using the newly developed molecular technologies of genes, splicing were first introduced. Industry experts forecasted that 
Soon, everyone in the beverage alcohol industry will be using yeast that has been modified in this way. The designer strengths would be able to expand what substrates the yeast could use, fermentation times would be shorter and flavor profiles would be easily adjusted by tweaking the biochemical pathways. In 1994, the Brewing Research Foundation in the United Kingdom produced a light beer using a genetically modified organism as the test case for the industry. The glucoamylase gene was introduced into a large brewing strain. This allowed the genetically modified yeast to ferment some of the residual starch that is normally left in the beer when a non-GM yeast is used and it also lets the brewer avoid the use of added commercial enzymes to remove some of this starch. The beer produced with the GM yeast received government clearance at that time as a safe product. However, 20 years later, to the best of our knowledge, there are no large commercial breweries using GM yeast in the industry to produce mainstream beers. The anti-GMO sentiments in terms of a brewing yeast strain for beer production are as prevalent now and indeed even stronger than they were over 25 years ago. The same consumer concerns apply to the yeast strains employed by the industry for spirit production even though there would be no live yeast present in the spirit after distillation. How this process optimization can be done to improve the technology? Leaner manufacturing, it's also called as brewing intensification, is about process optimization and increased efficiencies have been one of the main priorities for both large and small brewing and distilling companies and wineries. So the key areas that have been addressed are increased rates of fermentation and yeast selection, decreased maturation times for the product, enhanced quality and stability of the final product and reduced capital expenditure. The implementation of high gravity brewing here has been one of the great successes in terms of process optimization. High gravity brewing was originally developed to reduce capital expenditure as it involves producing a wort at a higher than normal concentration and then diluting with water later in the process. This allows a brew house to increase the production without having to physically expand the plant. This was the primary goal when high gravity brewing was first implemented but soon other benefits were apparent such as a reduction in water energy, labor, cleaning and effluent cost. In many cases, improvements in consumer panels in terms of a more positive flavor profile of the product produced by high gravity brewing versus standard gravity brewing were also seen. Now, let us look into the process improvement using the immobilized yeast technology. Immobilized yeast technology is an area that has great potential but has not yet overcome the barriers to entry for an industrial process for mainstream products. Continuous fermentation using immobilized cell technology is an ambitious brewing fermentation process that has been explored for many years as an alternative. In brewing, the goal is to make a finalized beer in two days rather than waiting the five to seven days for the primary fermentation and then five to 21 days for beer maturation. Pilot plants have been constructed to perform long-term trials. But to date, the only large scale production is the use of immobilized cell technology for the production of beers. In theory, the high volumetric productivity should lead to significant savings in capital, time and operational costs. However, finding a suitable and affordable carrier and addressing the issues of yeast viability, consistent flavor matches for the product and some consumer negative concerns regarding a change from traditional technology have all hampered the implementation of this technology. Several options continue to be investigated 
on how to overcome these barriers to success. What is the future technology for the production of alcoholic beverages? The biggest opportunity for improving the fermentation process currently lies in the use of GM organism for the fermentation process since this is the heart of beverage alcohol production. However, since so much of an alcohol beverage brand is associated with consumer perceptions, the use of this technology is not likely to be embraced until there is a massive change in consumer perception and widespread consumer acceptance. The vast area of unexplored yeast on our planet also offers a huge resource for exploration that is not yet being fully exploited. This module has presented you the importance of the various technologies involved in the production of alcoholic beverages namely wine, beer and distilled liquors. And also it has enlightened the various individual stepwise process involved in this production of the alcoholic beverages. And this module has highlighted the importance of immobilized yeast which is being used for the future. And also this has given you an idea of how about uh, genetically modified or modified organisms can be used for the production of all these alcoholic beverages for the innovative ideas.